Hi everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to tie <clears throat> or make a uh, popper or slider using shrink tubing and a uh, foam interior to make a popper or a slider. The first thing you're going to need is uh, some shrink tubing. This particular piece, uh, this is how it comes. I buy it in four foot sections. This is 3 8 inch in diameter. This particular color is red. I use it in black. I use it in white and I like it in yellow. Once you have your shrink tubing and you decide what size uh, slider you're going to make or pop or pencil popper, uh, the next thing you need is some type of uh, wood dowel to shrink it around. Here I have two primary, well one's a primary school pencil, that one is, that I've put in a pencil sharpener and made a taper on. This is a thinner one, pencil, that I've done the same thing. Or you can use a wood dowel like I have right here and put a taper on that. Next thing you do is slide your wood dowel that I'm using into your shrink tubing as so. Tap it so that the bottom is flush right here. Take a butane lighter and let's make the form that we want. This is just going to be a standard popper form that we're creating here. As you can see it shrinks nicely and conforms to whatever shape is underneath it. If you keep the lighter a distance away it won't turn black and get sooty. And once it's shrunk to the shape you want we're done with the lighter. Okay, it's still a little warm. The next step is to slide it off your wood dowel. And there you have a hollow shrink tube. The next thing we're going to need is some type of foam to put in the middle of it. You can use any type of foam you want. I uh, being the thrifty person that I am, I like to find old lobster buoys on the beach. And what I do is I use a piece of brass tubing and a 3 8 inch drill. I sharpen one end, put a piece of wood in the other end, put it in my drill, spray it with WD-40, and proceed to drill out all these tubes. You take the tube out, punch them out, once they're done and you're going to slide it into your shrink tubing for size. Okay, it goes in and it's going to stop where the taper is which is important because that's where your hook eye is going to go in with your material. Once it stops you mark it with your finger where it stopped and I like to withdraw it about an eighth of an inch and then cut it to length. After I've done that, I'm going to cut it in half again, only because it makes it easier to put on to my dubbing needle. Okay, once I've cut them into two pieces, I take them and I actually thread my dubbing needle through one and then through the other. There we go. Two pieces of foam. Now I'm going to take that foam and I've heated up the dubbing needle and made the holes a little bit bigger. You can do that now or you can do that later. I take the foam, I insert it into my shrink tubing until it hits that taper. Now when it's withdrawn in there probably about an eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch what I like to do I said I was done with the lighter I was wrong you're gonna take the lighter again and very don't touch the foam just along the edge here get it to fold in
around the foam. If you get it too close to the foam, the foam will melt. Okay, once we're done with that, we've closed it in. And what you've created is a floating tube. that you will be able to slide your leader right through and out the other end. Um, let's see, I have something long enough here. I can, you can see that my needle will go straight through and out the other end. So you can have these pre-made up in a bunch of different sizes. You can add eyes, you can do anything you want to them. I really like these in black. So I've done a black one here. I have a red one here with the taper. Ooh, sorry about that. You can see the taper on it. And I guess one of my favorite daytime colors, early morning colors is yellow with a chartreuse tail. But black or white at night, red and white, with a red tail, you can interchange these, it's simple. Um, let's see, so when you finally put the whole thing together, I'll give you an idea of what it looks like. Okay, just put some black bucktail on the hook. This is, you can use any tail material you want. Like I said, you can use any foam you want uh, for the cylinders. There's live body foam that you can buy. Um, there's, the insulating foam that you can buy at Home Depot that you can buy. Um, so here's, let's just, I can fish this, you know that, just as it is in catch fish. But if I wanted to make it into a slider, here I will take my black slider head that I made, or popper, pencil popper, and I'll put my monofilament through here or whatever material you use if you want to if you're there's blues around slide this over here and you can see I've created a nice pencil popper that's pretty durable I've caught many blue fish on these what happens is they put puncture marks in them they look like little needle marks uh, but what happens is with this short shank hook, they grab it and this will slide up the leader a little bit during the fight. And most of the fighting goes on this here, the fly part, the short shank hook. And this doesn't get destroyed. And even if it, they grab onto it, I found that because it can turn like this, the bluefish, when they thrash, that's when they do the most damage to plugs and it's not fixed to the hook. If I, I used to glue these to the hook and they could still tear them, but once they thrash and this just turns in their mouth, it's like a marshmallow in their mouth and they, they really have a tough time doing any damage to it. The yellow one with the chartreuse is definitely a bluefish killer. This one at night, sliding it along the surface. Uh, the other thing I like about these, you can alternate the amount of foam that you want to put in the middle of them. And you can make them work like a stick bait because the back end of the fly will sink and the front will stay up. All right, I hope this uh, gives you an idea on something new to try. And good luck with it. Thank you.